Um, I'll start with Barnacle after Craig Arnold's Hermit Crab. Queer or circus performer, I live upside down inside my crinkled shell, both male and female within. I sup on the plankton my feathery feet coax. Did I tell you I have no heart? But court rhythm still in my filament-footed hip-hop dance for food. I have a single eye that sorts through dark and light. I like the tops of things, yes. I would say this is my way. They say I'm Cecil, which, which means immobile, which is true. When I find the right place, I stay. I keep my topsy-turvy softness sealed to rock or whale skin. I do not leave. Yet I have wondered without a heart why I grieve. I'm working um, on a, a manuscript. It's become a bit of an obsession. I sometimes just want to turn away and say, be done. <laughs> um, on, I, I'm working with uh, August Rodin's uh, sculpture and working on poems that uh, work with his, his work. Um, and this one, I'm going to actually, he had a collection of his own kind of fragments and sculpture pieces. Um, and this one's called Torso of Venus, which is actually after one of his antique fragments of the same name in his private collection. I carry you in my arms to the table, set you down lovingly, beautiful little torso, washed in from the sea, smooth like beachcombers glass. I carry you in my arms to the table, but you are not glass. And the waves had to heave you, beautiful little torso, to give you to me. You surprised me, dear fragment of 160 pounds. I carry you in my arms to the table, the exact weight of real flesh. I love you because of what's missing, beautiful little torso, and what remains, a terrible power. I carry you in my arms to the table, my beautiful little torso. And then um, he did a piece called The Sister of Icarus. Um, so this is... Um, from the perspective of the sister of Icarus, which really, we don't really know if there was a sister, but um, it's kind of <laughs> fun to think about. Our father's will led us to make the leap from ground dweller to bird of paradise. He taught us how to make wings, how to, ex how to collect exotic quill from whooping cranes, how to use hemp to tie on the broad feathers, beeswax to glue in the small ones. I remember how he drilled us on flight patterns just stay clear of the sun, he'd say. And how he'd send us searching for the trail of a phoenix up steep gray stone. You told me phoenix tears could heal, just like poems. That was the summer. I glimpsed your inspired body and knew you'd test your wings for real. The day of the flight, I thought of our father, who told you to stay moderate, who trusted you with wax things. He did not your, know your lust for heights, he did not know you until you were up that high, the air like breath and the golden eye of the sun pulling your moth wings. You could no more fly away than our father could fly toward. Like a kite, you would reach out and taste that heat, like burnt caramel on your tongue, the tickle of singed eyelashes, the feel of the fire eater swallowing. There we go. <laughs> Enough flame to melt the heart. It's why I could not resent your tumble down the atmosphere, the melting beeswax, the scattered feathers, the violent impact onto blue water. Beyond the reach even of phoenix tears, your blazing wings scorched bright. And then finally I'll finish with um, Hemingway House, Key West, Florida. The crowd, mostly spring breakers and cruise ship day trippers, gathered to listen to the guide, efficiently remember your apocryphal penny, the pool, and the polydactyl cats lounging in the courtyard. You left for Cuba a long while back, leaving the trunk inscribed with E.H. and your studio intact, the typewriter. What remained was reserved for what we think you were, a writer of novels, fisherman, hunter. We speculate, formulate, enjoy our guide with the jade necklace who offered cookies to the ghost of the old man in the sea. In this alchemy, a place we recalled more vividly 
how the old man spoke to his hands like long-time lovers, and how the boy spoke to the man devotedly. Where did you retrieve this emotion? How simply you offered it? The studio was quiet, but for lingering cogitation, cotton webs in the corners, where you wrangled the quiet waters of turquoise with the marlin being sadly picked apart. We looked at your photos, old spines of books, the French tile in the bathroom, the urinal you brought back from Africa installed as a fountain for the cats, and we wondered whether you were having a good or bad luck morning when you sat in this place waiting for the old man to find the shore that he lost. Thank you.